And skeptics who deal with these things, who are usually anti uh, the paranormal, always come back and say, well, you know, it was uncanny. It seemed to work. And I think the worldwide presence of these divining systems, which seem to work, but which we won't admit work, because we can't imagine a scientific principle that would allow them to work, yes. they're really signaling to us that the universe is more complicated than our scientific principles are able to make room for. So, he's on the right track. He's on the right track. It's always about a, a set of defined elements whether they're hexagrams, cards, stones, crystals, and then uh, a randomizing of them, either a shaking and a tossing or a choosing or something like that. And then out of the human imagination come associative projections, which are always strangely right on the money. And this indicates to me there's a resonance between the human psyche and the world that is invisible to the ego and that can only be coaxed into an observational space by tricking the ego through a kind of random process like throwing cards mm -hmm. or dice. Sounds to me like you simply have a far more refined process, but, but uh, I've so heard the similarities. All right, here's one for you. Back to time travel. Uh, just a thought to ponder regarding time travel. You're going to have to listen carefully. Okay. Karen's made a statement it, with regard to the possibility of eliminating your own existence by killing your own grandfather, as an example. If time travel was possible, it would be impossible to eliminate yourself by killing your own grandfather. The reason for this being that if time travel is possible, then time would be kind of like a loop tape which is constantly replaying itself by killing your own grandfather you would cease to exist. Therefore, as the loop replays itself, you would not exist to be able to kill your own grandfather. Consider it. You travel back in time, point a gun at and shoot your grandfather to death prior to his ever having children. You instantly cease to exist. But if you cease to exist, who would pull the trigger on the gun as the time loop replays itself? Confusing, but interesting and worth pondering. Well, that is the grandfather paradox. They perfectly stated it. I don't exactly hear it as an objection to what I said. That is a perfect stating of, of why many people have thought time travel was impossible or that you could only travel forward uh, into the future. All right. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Terrence McKenna. Hello. Are you? Hi. Uh, Terrence, uh, from what I've heard, you are obviously a disciple of Satan. And I have to say that I, I want to know why no scientist has ever uh, disproven the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All right, Terence, uh, oh, disciple of Satan. Uh, yes, he is a disciple of the devil. Okay, well, let's <laughs> let's get his reaction to that. Uh, we're we're talking of uh, of these matters, so it is worth uh, some consideration, Terence. Um, how do you respond? Uh, well, if I am a disciple of Satan, uh, it's an unknowing disciple. Okay. Uh, I am, at your break, uh, someone said I was a heretic. I certainly am a heretic. You're not a heretic, uh, you're just deceived. Uh, pardon me? You're deceived. You're not a heretic. You're deceived by Satan. Uh, when you die, you will know that Jesus Christ is God. Uh, well, perhaps. And he did come My the position on all of this is... Sir, a pause and pa sir, pause and let him answer. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my position in this is that we're not in this world to choose between good ideologies and bad ideologies. I think that sort of, I don't know, maybe this is middle age setting in on me, but I've sort of come to the conclusion that all ideologies are the enemies of human freedom, and that we're not. You know, you haven't made progress when you choose existentialism over Christianity or uh, anything over anything. Uh, real maturity begins when you notice that these ideologies are cultural furniture. So oh, Jesus Christ was a liar. No, no, he was. Uh, oh, no. No, no, he was God. He, 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 says he was he, a piece of cultural was. furniture inside Western civilization. Uh, but let me turn to this question of the resurrection for a moment, which I find a little more interesting. All right. Uh, I can't remember in which gospel it is. The caller probably can tell us. Uh, but when the Marys go to the tomb, 
uh, the morning after the resurrection and Christ is there, he says to them as they approach, he says, women, touch me not, for I am not yet fully of the nature of the Father. Mm -hmm. And I have never heard any Christian enthusiast discuss exactly what this means. It's a fascinating statement. Here is Christ resurrected, uh, having overcome death, standing alive at the side of the tomb, but saying, I am not yet completely of the nature of the Father. And what this suggests to me is some kind of crypto-biological process that we're de dealing with here. I don't think science can prove or disprove the resurrection because science never deals with unique events. If if we had a thousand resurrections, I suppose they could statistically examine it and make a judgment. But things, these unique historical events are more properly the study of historians. Not me, uh, you, well, in, uh, let me ask you, in your own little way, as a historian, uh, as you have looked back to uh, develop your model, Mm -hmm. uh, when you get to the time of Christ, mm -hmm. what do you see? What oh, kind of peak do you see? It's a very good question. question. Yes. Fascinating question. Fascinating question. At that point in the wave, there is a unique uh, signature that doesn't occur at anywhere else in the wave. So, in a sense, it does indicate uh, the life of Christ as being incredibly unique. But recall I said it never says what will happen, it just says where to look. Mm -hmm. And what makes the call on Christ a little difficult, although, uh, well, what makes it a little difficult is that Christ shared the earth with Augustus Caesar. In fact, the, the story of Christ's birth mentions that uh, Joseph and Mary were going because of a census of the world Indeed. that Caesar had called. Well, Caesar Augustus was one of the greatest military and political geniuses of all time. So he's in the same part of the wave as Christ. Uh, I don't know how to tease them apart, but I can certainly tell you that the time wave tells us that the period from 15 B.C. to 40 A.D. was extremely novel. I have spoken with a number of, again, uh, referring to the remote viewers, Mm -hmm. And they have made a unique statement, many of them, uh, that at 2012, or at approximately 2012, uh, they can look no further. And they see, they run into a sort of a, a brick wall, if you will, and it is as though there is nothing beyond. But what they do see and describe is a gigantic spiritual event of some magnitude which they're unable to discern the precise nature of. Uh, that's, I, I could climb aboard all of this. I think we're headed for everything we can imagine. In other words, the resurrection and the life, the overcoming of three-dimensional space and time, time travel, star flight, immortality, planetary telepathy, consciousness out of the body. It will be delivered uh, by human hands, out of the human imagination, under the prompting of the, of the gods and the entities and, uh, and the forces in the human unconscious. It is fortuitous, uh, Terence, that we are doing this program and recording all of this for history, uh, for the time after they toss you into the volcano. <laughs> <laughs> West of the Rockies, you're on the air with Terrence McKenna. Hello. Terrence. Where, Hello? Yes, where are you, sir? I'm in Prince George, B.C. Uh, British way Columbia. Up, yeah, way up here in Canada. Okay. Friendly neighbor to the north. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> I'm just getting a little uh, disheartened by some of these weird Christians. But that's beside the point. I wanted to ask uh, Terrence if he'd ever read any uh, Castaneda. Oh, yeah. I read a lot of the early stuff. A lot of the early stuff. There's a, a later one called The Fire From Within. And for, for any of the viewers out there who are digging this, which I am, I'm only 21, but I've been waiting a thousand years to, to hear this program. But uh, Look, I mostly have listeners. Now, I'm not saying some are not viewing. Uh, 
<laughs> mostly listeners. Oh, viewers, uh, listeners. The ones who are of my persuasion. I might be viewing. Well, you got to use, use the real eyes. But anyways, um, the, 